Hey everyone, it's Ellen. Today we're talking about something really important happening on the other side of the world abortion laws in Taiwan. Now Taiwan's not usually making headlines for things like this. They're known for their amazing food, beautiful scenery, and friendly people. But right now, they're facing a big decision about women's rights and access to health care. You see, Taiwan has had abortion laws on the books for a while, but recently, there's been a lot of talk about changing those laws, and not everyone agrees on what those changes should look like. Some people want to make it harder to get an abortion, while others believe women should have the right to make their own choices about their bodies. This isn't just a debate happening in Taiwan. All over the world, people are grappling with the same questions about abortion, women's rights, and the role of government in personal decisions. It's a complex issue with no easy answers, but it's important to understand what's at stake. So let's take a closer look at what's going on in Taiwan and why it matters. So what exactly are these proposed changes to Taiwan's abortion laws? Well, right now, abortion is legal in Taiwan, but there are some rules. For example, women need counseling and a waiting period before they can have an abortion. But the proposed changes would make it even more difficult. One of the biggest changes being talked about is increasing the waiting period before an abortion. Right now, it's six days, but some lawmakers want to make it longer. They say this will give women more time to think about their decision, but others argue that it just creates more obstacles for women who have already made up their minds. Another proposed change is requiring parental consent for minors seeking an abortion. This means that if you're under 18 and you want to have an abortion, your parents would have to give their permission. This is a really sensitive issue, especially in cases where there might be abuse or pressure within a family. Now on one side of this debate, you have groups who are fighting for women's rights. They believe that women should have the right to choose what happens to their own bodies, and that includes the right to have an abortion. They argue that criminalizing abortion doesn't stop abortions from happening. It just makes them less safe. Think about it. If a woman is desperate and can't access a safe and legal abortion, she might be forced to seek out dangerous alternatives. This puts her health and even her life at risk. It's a heartbreaking situation that nobody wants to see. These groups often talk about bodily autonomy, which is the idea that everyone has the right to make decisions about their own body. They say that forcing a woman to carry a pregnancy to term against her will is a violation of her basic human rights. It's about respecting women and trusting them to make the best choices for themselves and their lives. On the other side of the debate, there are groups who are opposed to decriminalizing abortion. They have strong beliefs about the sanctity of life and believe that abortion is morally wrong. They argue that every life, even a fetus, is precious and deserves protection. These groups often express concern about the potential impact of decriminalization on society as a whole. They worry that it might lead to more abortions and that it sends the wrong message about the value of life. They believe that society has a responsibility to protect the vulnerable, including unborn children. It's important to remember that these are deeply held beliefs, often rooted in religious or cultural values. While not everyone may agree with these views, it's crucial to understand where they're coming from and to engage in respectful dialogue, even when discussing difficult topics. Section 5. Global Perspectives Abortion Laws Around the World Now it's important to remember that Taiwan isn't alone in this. The debate over abortion is happening all over the world, and laws vary widely from country to country. Some countries like Canada have very liberal abortion laws, while others like El Salvador have completely banned it. In recent years, there's been a growing trend towards liberalization of abortion laws. Countries like Ireland and Argentina have voted to legalize abortion, recognizing that women have the right to control their own bodies. These changes have been driven by grassroots movements and powerful advocacy from women's rights groups. However, there's also been a pushback against abortion rights in some parts of the world. In the United States, for example, several states have passed restrictive abortion laws limiting access to safe and legal abortion services. This has sparked outrage and legal challenges, with many arguing that these laws are unconstitutional and harmful to women. Section 6. The impact on Taiwanese society, a complex issue. So what would these proposed changes mean for Taiwanese society? Well, it's complicated. On the one hand, some people argue that stricter abortion laws would protect unborn children and uphold moral values. 
They believe it would send a message that life is precious and should be protected. On the other hand, others worry that it would have negative consequences for women. They argue that it would limit women's choices and could lead to unsafe abortions. They also point out that it could disproportionately impact women from disadvantaged backgrounds who may not have the resources to access safe abortion services. It's important to consider the potential impact on healthcare providers as well. Some doctors might be hesitant to perform abortions if they fear legal repercussions, even in cases where it's medically necessary. This could create a climate of fear and uncertainty in the healthcare system. Section 7 Balancing Rights, Fetal Rights versus Women's Autonomy At the heart of this debate is a fundamental question. How do we balance the rights of the fetus with the rights of the woman carrying the pregnancy? This is a question with no easy answers, and it's one that people feel very strongly about. Those who believe in fetal rights argue that from the moment of conception, a fetus is a human being with the right to life. They believe that abortion is morally equivalent to murder and should be illegal. They often cite religious beliefs or ethical principles to support their stance. On the other hand, those who prioritize women's autonomy believe that women have the right to make decisions about their own bodies, including whether or not to continue a pregnancy. They argue that forcing a woman to carry an unwanted pregnancy to term is a violation of her basic human rights. This clash of values is at the core of the abortion debate, not just in Taiwan, but around the world. Finding a solution that respects the deeply held beliefs of both sides is a complex and challenging task. Section 8, Potential Outcomes, What's Next for Taiwan? So, what happens next in Taiwan? Well, that's the big question. The proposed changes to the abortion law are still being debated, and it's not clear when or if they will be passed. It's a fluid situation with a lot of moving parts. There are several possible outcomes. The government could decide to pass the proposed changes into law, making it more difficult for women to access abortion services. Or, they could choose to maintain the status quo, keeping the current laws in place. Another possibility is that they could introduce alternative measures, such as increased funding for sex education and contraception. This could help to reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies in the first place, addressing the root causes of the issue. Ultimately, the decision will be made by Taiwanese lawmakers, taking into account the views of their constituents, the opinions of experts, and the potential impact on society as a whole. It's a decision with far-reaching consequences that will shape the future of reproductive rights in Taiwan. Section 9. The Importance of Dialogue – Understanding Different Views No matter what side of this issue you're on, one thing's for sure, we need to talk about it. It's easy to get caught up in our own opinions and forget that other people might see things differently. But having open and honest conversations is the only way to find common ground and move forward. When we listen to each other with respect and empathy, we open ourselves up to new perspectives. We might not always agree, but we can at least try to understand where the other person is coming from. This is especially important when it comes to complex and sensitive issues like abortion. So let's all make an effort to talk to people who have different views than our own. Let's ask questions, listen to their answers, and try to see the world through their eyes. You might be surprised at what you learn. You might be surprised at what you learn. Section 10, Your Voice Matters. Share your thoughts. This is a conversation that affects all of us, so I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on Taiwan's proposed abortion law changes? Do you think women should have the right to choose? Or do you believe in protecting fetal rights? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's have a respectful and thoughtful discussion about this important issue. And don't forget to participate in our poll to let us know where you stand. Your voice matters. Section 11. Conclusion. A decision with far-reaching consequences. Taiwan's debate over abortion law revisions is a stark reminder of the complex and often emotionally charged nature of this issue. It's a debate that touches on fundamental questions about life, morality, and the role of government in personal decisions. As we've seen, there are strong arguments on both sides. Those who support decriminalization emphasize women's rights, bodily autonomy, and the importance of safe and legal access to abortion services. Opponents prioritize fetal rights, moral concerns, 